Hey, what's up guys? Arava here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 23 My Team Career Mode. This is part number 74 today for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix in Season 5. Yes, another early Abu Dhabi GP. It was a great addition to the series last season in Season 4 and it's back again for Season 5. But if you guys did miss the previous episode at the Las Vegas Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. A stonking episode, really. We got treated to a top five battle where all five cars were fighting for first place on the last lap. And it went down literally to the final corners. And unfortunately, and spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the episode by now, it ended in absolute tragedy. Maybe a little bit of karma for what happened to us in Australia with gaining the positions under the safety car. But we got spun. It was a racing incident. It was bound, something was bound to happen with so many cars close together, uh, you know, at, at the end of the Las Vegas Strip. And unfortunately, I was the victim of that, really. And uh, Teo Porcher, well, I mean, he's already laying down an ominous, ominous marker as he has maximized his points. It's two wins to kick off his campaign this season. 50 points. The next car is 26 points, Charles Leclerc. So, uh, yeah, our new teammate's pretty darn scary. We've got work to do. Obviously, we would have scored quite well in Las Vegas if it wasn't for that final little spin. So, the you know, it's not a disaster at the moment, but you've got to say... Teo Porcher has had a very impressive start to the season, whereas you've got, you know, Leclerc in second place. He had a bit of a, you know, quieter Australian Grand Prix. And then his teammate, Sonoda, who got a podium in Australia, had a very quiet Las Vegas Grand Prix after breaking his front wing. So, you know, a lot of other people not just being uh, as consistent, whereas Teo Porcher has got pole both races and has won both races. So, uh, forgive me for being maybe a little bit worried already about our our younger teammates. But all we can really do at this point in time is look inward and try and improve our performances. Qualifying, clearly, we need to really pull up our socks. Obviously, it's not my strongest suit anyway, but versus poor chair, it seems like we have the same problem as we did versus Gasly. What is it with our French teammates just being so good over one lap and uh, yeah poor chair two poles in a row is um yeah he's doing brilliantly and we need to put, pick up the speed really Q1 wasn't an amazing confidence booster for that because we had to do two runs and even our second run only got us just about into Q2 P15 Leclerc Big name out in Q1, though. So I wasn't the only one struggling out there. Both Ferraris also seemingly struggling to get up to pace. And it seems like now, unlike in Las Vegas, where maybe the straight line speed was helping Red Bull Ford out, they've dropped off a little bit in pace. McLaren have got a little bit quicker. And even Mercedes, Valtteri Bottas, up there in the top 10. So, yeah, it's a very different circuit, of course, to Las Vegas. And I've already alluded to, I think the, the Ford engine is very, very solid, clearly. And that's a big aid to Red Bull at circuits where you can kind of, you know, um, take advantage of that. And it's the same thing for our car. We know we've got a great engine. Maybe in other departments, even with a maxed out car, there's just a limit of how good our car is versus the official Formula One teams around us because I'm feeling a little bit of lack of base here versus Las Vegas. Poor chair looking pretty all right though. So it really, again, is just me over one lap. Second flyer here in Q2. We go wide at the final corner. We scrub off two tenths of the second there. We were going to be about six, six tenths up and we end up just about four tenths up on our first flying lap. And to my shock, even that wasn't enough. The track just evolved and evolved and everyone else just went so much quicker and we are knocked out. We are out in Q2 in P12. Poor chairs up there in P3. Gasly top in the session for Audi. Both Haas cars have made it through into the top 10. So Haas looking pretty good here. Dragovic P2. Fittipaldi P10. Only one Aston Martin of course of Sonoda with Leclerc knocked out earlier. Russell does very well to be up there in P6. Bottas just couldn't quite make it in. Mick Schumacher, the sole Ferrari, and Albon, the sole McLaren. So, to be fair, I'm I, I'm with some good company, you know. Myself, Bottas, Verstappen, Piastri, Sainz, all of our teammates are in the top 10, and we're all respectively the, the, the side, the garage that are out of qualifying at this early stage. So, I think we've had this before at Abu Dhabi as well. There's just something about it where one teammate can find that groove and the other one just can't. So, for us, it's not meant to be. And this is... 
pretty much the opposite of what I was talking about, or what we needed to do off the back of Porsche winning two races in a row and uh, and our ending to Las Vegas. Um, we're now just going to have to do all the talking on the track in the race then and really make up positions from P12 on the grid. Let's go to the grid and find out how the top 10 ended out. So here we are, ready to go racing for one final time this year. Another season of victories, controversies and rivalries lies in our wake. And just one challenge remains, here in the United Arab Emirates, on a circuit that made its spectacular debut back in 2009. Welcome to the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. We have 16 corners here at Yas Marina Circuit, seven to the right and nine to the left. It's a total lap distance of 3.28 miles. Two long straights and overtaking opportunities throughout the lap. We expect average speeds of around 123 miles per hour. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Felipe Drogovic lines up on pole position and it's Pierre Gasly in P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Teo Porsche, Fittipaldi, Russell, Norris, Sonoda, Mick Schumacher, Liam Lawson, Bottas, the owner driver, Verstappen, Albon, Oscar Piastri, Ocon, Sainz, Leclerc, Ricardo, Perez, Sargent, Joe, and Kevin Magnussen fills the last spot on the grid. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. Anthony Davidson is alongside me as usual for today's race. Joining me for today's race once again is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about Mercedes. We have some changes to the regulations, of course, which mainly revolve around the chassis this year. And unfortunately, the early signs are that they've not adapted particularly well. There are a few downcast looks within the team this weekend. I think they've been hit fairly hard by the new regs but this is only the first step down a long road of development. And even if they don't maximize their points today, there are plenty more up for grabs this season. So if you did actually watch that grid sequence then for the full starting grid, I'm sure your jaw is on the floor because Felipe Drogovic, the Brazilian, is on pole position for Alfa Romeo Haas. Unbelievable. What a top 10 shootout that must have been. Uh, Drogovic P1, Gasly. P2. Fittipaldi also on the second row showing that it's not even just Drogovic pulling out a performance. It's the Haas car. Clearly, it's just a circuit that suits them or they've made a slight upgrade um, because, you know, we've seen other teams looking a little bit better. Mercedes, McLaren, maybe with their own upgrades into this weekend. But what a performance for Haas. Can they convert this? Can they get at least one of these cars to finish on the podium? And it's looking like a very open race. Haas versus Audi, Lamborghini, maybe others in there. And that's good news for us outside the top 10. Hopefully, people are fighting ahead of us and we can get in the mixer and get in the middle as we go to five red lights for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Round three is on the way as it's lights out. And away we go. Slow start for Lawson. Oh, my God. What the hell has just gone on there? Max Verstappen is nearly decked us into the wall. It was a T-bone collision. My life flashed before my eyes as I don't know how, I don't know how on earth we've done it, but we've actually come out unscathed. We've got absolutely no damage to the car. No barge board or end plate damage from Verstappen hitting us. And we still have our front wing intact as we were pretty much inches away from the wall there, but um, I was so focused on overtaking, I think it was Lawson and Sonoda, they both lined up and both bogged down on the right hand side, so I was looking to go aggressively to the inside line for turn one, and I just I had no idea where Verstappen was or wasn't even really looking behind me uh, as you would at the, at the race start, and so we've tripped over Verstappen, both of us getting caught up in that, and now we're both down the order, we're P19, or it was P19, is we're going to overtake the Dutchman to get up into p18 at least but um not ideal very very long day ahead of us i think you can agree because we were p11 now we've got even more work to do from p18 but this is the replay then and ah i just didn't know verstappen was that close to me but i'm not gonna lie the the contact sensitivity there is pretty crazy 
to say how much Verstappen actually touched me. Like at this point, I think it's the two tyres, his front right tyre and my left rear. I think that has rotated my car so much qui uh, quicker than it usually probably would if it was like a normal bit of contact, basically. So, because my car went round so quickly that I just couldn't react. And then this was us going opposite lock. And look at how close our front wing is to the to the barrier there. I think Verstappen makes slight contact with the barrier with his tyre. He's actually lucky as well not to have damage. So, yeah, heart and mouth moment for us. And now both myself and Verstappen have it all to do. Meanwhile, back to the live racing action at the top of the grid. It's Pierre Gasly who leads the way. Poor chair in second. So it's my old teammate and my current teammate in 1-2. Felipe Dragovic is down to P3. Fittipaldi stays in P4 at least. So it's still a top four two top fours for the Haas team but um, yeah Dragovic has seemingly just uh, felt the pressure there from pole position and lost two positions as we look to really start our comeback here as uh, we're getting onto the back of Carlos Sainz who's watching a great battle between Perez and Leclerc meanwhile at the front there's a great battle going maybe between the two Frenchmen Paul Chair on the outside for the race lead and it's three wide meanwhile uh, back in front of us as we go back on board and it's Leclerc in the middle of a Science and Perez sandwich. Science has got the better of the two of them. So Science actually has made a double overtake there on Leclerc and Perez. And poor chair, our teammate, has overtaken Gasly. He's into the lead. But look at Felipe Dragovic, the Brazilian, on the outside as Russell spun it. Everything is kicking off here. Deja vu from Las Vegas. Uh, you know, maybe not as close call, call as Las Vegas uh, with a car uh, facing the wrong way. It was Ocon in Vegas. It's uh, Russell this time around. But um, that brings out the virtual safety car. So uh, uh, once it ends, we are going to be right up behind Carlos Sainz. I was actually in the middle of overtaking Sainz and then the virtual safety car came out. So we had to relinquish the position. But uh, both myself and Sainz have done well to overtake the two cars of Leclerc and Perez. And uh, Leclerc obviously being knocked out in Q1 in that very quick Aston Martin. He's struggling to make up positions now in this race. Wonder if he's got a bit of damage potentially. As look at this though. He gets to the apex first. Felipe Dragovic has just easily made the pass to get back into P1. He lost it off the start, but he's now just got his head down and he's back into the lead of this Grand Prix. Poor chair and Gasly continue to fight. It's the more senior Frenchman round the outside for Audi and our junior Frenchman in the Lamborghini on the left-hand side of the circuit. I think Gasly's going to have surely the better racing line, but they continue to squabble. Cutting back to our POV, though, we've got some action now here as we sling one down the inside of Daniel Ricciardo. Cool as you want, inches away from uh, getting, getting the elbow and actually making some contact with Ricciardo, but we kept it clean. And now we're going to catch Piastri napping in the middle of lap four. At the end of the back straight, Piastri just caught up behind Ocon, and uh, we, we make easy work of him. The McLaren, uh, uh, they looked much better on Saturday, but... Once again, this season, for the first time really on this game, the McLarens don't look that great in race conditions. Like, ever since the game launched last year, the McLarens have been really great in the races. They've been punchy. They've been consistent in this series, of course, as title challenges. This is the first time we're really seeing McLaren struggle in these races. You know, Piastri, no real pace. Albon, his new teammate, actually looking the more comfortable of the two, but we're still going to try and overtake him as well on the outside, a little bit wide, and we make life a little bit harder for ourselves on the outside, having to do a bit more hard work on the exit and then try and squeeze out to the left to book in the P10. So six laps later, we finally got back to whereabouts we qualified basically after that half spin with Max Verstappen and lap, uh, on lap six, we're now on the back of Liam Lawson, our title rival from last season. The man who spun me at the end of Las Vegas. Hopefully no funny business going on in this episode. To be fair, it was a racing incident and because of that, it's still pretty respectful stuff between myself and Liam Lawson. There is no problems between us do and it's just hard and fast and fair racing and Lawson fair to, to be fair to him did really well to defend there he got a great exit off that long left hander and was just able to re overtake us but this time now can we get to the inside Lawson's gonna squeeze us though bit of contact made Lawson's adamant about trying to take that corner as tight as he can he hops the curb then and potentially might have just damaged his floor I think 
with the amount he mounted that curb and uh, to that effect we overtake him for P9 and he's actually straight away under pressure from Albon. I actually think Lawson probably has got some damage off that curb mount as we watch uh, Bottas versus Sonoda. Mercedes have definitely made a, a slight improvement as uh, Bottas is doing very well to be battling that very quick Aston Martin. We know how good it's been uh, in these races so far but yet to get that elusive win and if anything the Haas looks like it might be on to get the win because Dragovic is 2.3 seconds hang on 2.3 seconds ahead of Porsche Fittipaldi is up into P3 what is going on Haas are looking unbelievable at the moment as on lap 9 on to 10 we are in for a pit stop might be a bit surprising no one else is in apart from this Stappen the two people, ironically, that tangled over each other in the pits. But that's because Verstappen was on soft, so that's why he's in. I'm in because I'm committing to the two-stop. We had this last season. We've had it in finales at Abu Dhabi where, like Vegas, if you commit early enough and you've got that general speed in the car, a two-stop can work wonders for you. And especially for me... Once I got up to, what was it, P8, I couldn't catch the next cars because my medium tyres were really not working very well. So I'd rather come in, get that undercut going on the hard compound. And then, it, you know, to be honest, because we're on hards, we can play it both ways. We could go all the way to the end of the one stop or we'll go for another pit stop and go on to softs. And obviously, because I got knocked out in Q2, I actually have a fully fresh set of softs to use at the end of this race. But at this moment in time, as we duck to the inside of Kevin Magnus in the focus is just maximizing the pace at the moment absolutely blitzing this and just overtaking cars left right and center and not wasting time and we absolutely didn't waste any time with the two Williams cars there Sargent holds us up a little bit in the final corner but you can just see that pace difference the tire wear difference there you know those mediums are wearing out for people and these hards are working well on this car but it's really just that undercut kind of performance that we're getting as we close up to this second Andretti Cadillac of the day Sergio Perez we already overtook him once in this race uh, early on on lap uh, on the opening laps and oh my what the hell Perez Perez being very aggressive my god on the outside there he actually jutted to the right through a left hander what was that about have no clue but uh, we'll, we'll carry on thankfully no damage has, uh, has been taken on that way in uh, lap 14 then a couple laps later and we've closed up now to Russell and Ricardo having a bit of a, a great squabble here in the last sector Russell was doing really well in the top 10 but he span it and now he's fighting an Alpine but that was a lovely lovely and uh, easy pass actually just having to be patient and pick the right racing line and we got the two for one pass on those two drivers now we get a couple of more overtakes as people are in the pit and look at that on the top left Felipe Drogovic, he's pit and he's behind us and he was leading the race. That means by the time everyone makes their pit stops, I think we're, we're going to be leading. Albon comes in, we were caught back up to Albon uh, and he's yet to make a pit stop, he now does. But here we are then, as we go on to lap 16, we are into the lead of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, such is the undercut we've got, but obviously the caveat is, there's a big chance that we are making that second stop, because it might be tempting to go to the end, but I just don't think we're going to have the pace. Let's see. Let's see. It depends on how quickly this man catches us. Felipe Dragovic is in second place, 2.4 behind us. Verstappen, to be fair to him as well, he's on this, well, early pit stop hype, and he's up to P4, but he's chosen another set of softs. So he's gone soft, soft. Very, very peculiar strategy for Ferrari. But uh, some others have been caught out. Gasly and Fittipaldi, they were both in the top four. Fittipaldi was P3 before the pit stops. He's now down in P10. So a couple of these guys who have gone later or maybe double stacked. I don't know what's happened there. But a few of them have been really caught out and lost a lot of positions in the pit stop uh, sequences. Meanwhile, people like Bottas and Sonoda, they've really gained. Sonoda and Bottas fighting for P5 and 6 now rather than, what was it, 7 and 8 before, uh, you know, the first round of stops. So good work for them. And uh, the Flying Finn doing very well to actually try and keep this P5 there. Mercedes have definitely made a step forward, you know, uh, in terms of upgrades because uh, Aston Martin, still the best team on paper, struggling to comfortably get ahead. But now they are on lap 19. Ten laps to go and Dragovic has caught us up now. It's taken him, uh, what, like two laps there and he's bridged the 2.4 second gap. So 
looking at the tire wear, it doesn't look too high numbers wise, but if you look at the pace that Drogovic has, the way he caught us up, poor chairs only 3.9 seconds back, Sonoda five, you know, six seconds. I just don't think, look, looking at the numbers, I didn't think it was worth staying out. I thought we would have been gobbled up and we've got a better chance if we back ourselves to pit making the second stop, going on to fresh softs and coming back through. And you know why I back myself? Because we did this last season. Now, to be fair, last season, we had the aid of a safety car that bunched us up. This time, there is no safety car to help us out. We have to fair and square close up and, you know, bridge the gap that we've got making this extra pit stop. But the thing is, now that this entire grid, we're all nearly at maxed out cars. I don't know if you've noticed, but it's actually a very tight race and the pack is very close together still. So positions can come thick and fast and they're going to start right here with a huge dive bomb on Alexander Albon. We almost had a bit of a blunder though because I was so scared about just crashing into the back of Carlos Sainz. Thankfully, we managed to escape an embarrassment of that and we just got uh, the tie brick driver. And now we're focusing on the car ahead of us, the Spaniard, Carlos Sainz. He's been struggling for pace compared to Gasly in that Audi of his and he's on the curb. He's got it crossed up and maybe felt the pressure of a quicker car on soft, uh, on fresh soft tyres up behind him and he's just pretty much given us the position there for P14 and now we're going to sling it down the inside of George Russell. I mean, look at that mid apex speed. It's ridiculous. We've got so much grip. We started off in P16. How far can we go with this kind of pace? As we're now immediately onto the back of the second McLaren of the day now in this stint on the outside of Piastri. He actually does very well to try and defend and make that awkward for me, but we just have that just immediate grip as soon as we get on throttle because of these fresher softs. Verstappen even making a second stop in this race, by the way. He just sets Vars after the Grand Prix, so he's going quicker than me. The Ferrari's going even better as we're making these moves as Verstappen is in clean air, still trying to catch up to the back of his pack. As we're now gaining on Liam Lawson on purpose, saving battery, just using the DRS to pull us in. And we've got quite a few cars in close proximity, so they're going to slow each other up naturally as Lawson just just gets caught napping completely. He's too worried about where Bottas is. As uh, we do, we are facing a little bit of engine wear on the on the right hand side. You can see the internal combustion engine is a little worn, so it might affect our straight line speed a tad. But it won't matter. The tyre pace is just so ridiculous that we overtake one, two, and it might be three by the time we get to the next hard break zone on the inside just before the hotel section we're up into p7 and well and truly at this stage now p7 was the position i was struggling to try and chase after before that first early pit stop so for me anything now above p7 i'll take it's an added bonus but the two stop has already done a job of overtaking and getting us higher than where we were when we when we got stuck with the tire performance basically early on in this race meanwhile though at the sharp end felipe drogovic he still leads the way, you know. I think you've got to start believing that the Brazilian can maybe win his first ever Formula 1 race today for Haas. Poor chair is in second, though. 2.3, and there's still a couple of laps left in this Grand Prix. So is there going to be a final twist in this tail? Meanwhile, lap 23, we are now on the back of Fittipaldi, the second Haas, and we're up into P6. And meanwhile, as we do that, ahead of us, look at this. Three wide, Red Bull versus Aston versus Audi. It's uh, Castley on the outside. Sonoda cut round the outside of all of them. And the Japanese driver is up into P3. Norris down to P4. Gasly close in with DRS. Both of them. Oh my god. Pierre Gasly. Mamma mia. That was a close call. That was a close one. If I didn't back out of that and just lift it off and hit the dab the brakes at the right time, that could have been game over. That was a race ending collision. Um, it wouldn't be the first time an Audi's caused the race ending collision towards the end of the Grand Prix, of course. Just last episode, Carlos Sainz and Norris had a race ending crash at the end of the Grand Prix. And Gasly, our old kind of foe and uh, ex-teammate, nearly caused a lot of pain for us there. Um, yeah, let's hopefully uh, avoid any bit of contact in these last few laps. We've done so well to get this far. We're trying to make a move on the inside of Norris, but he does well to defend. And of course, at this stage now... 
my softs are going to start wearing. So you're already maybe seeing, you know, diminishing returns. I'm not overtaking Norris as quickly as I maybe did, uh, you know, his teammate, for example, because now these softs are getting to a point where they're maybe just as bad as the hard tyres now for all these guys who've been going on for the one stop as we're still battling our fellow compatriot. And uh, look at this, a drag race in a straight line. Well, without the battery use, we're actually struggling to get past the Red Bull, just showing how strong that force engine actually is um, you know compared to, to compared to our engine which is a, a very very solid one of course we did so well to build such a great power unit uh, for last season and into the next as we now watch lap 26 Gasly and Sonoda once again side by side this time no Norris involved and we're actually the ones behind in P5 just watching this and waiting for the right opportunity and this is it Sonoda is slow his tie is a little bit cooked Gasly slowed him up by overtaking him and we're going to make a double pass try and get to the apex uh, as early as we can but uh, we've got a bit of understeer ourselves but it won't matter we've got up into p3 this well and truly remember on lap one we were down to p18 having been half spun by Verstappen. we've made a second pit stop unlike others and we've recovered to p3 this has been a very very good comeback drive. It's still gutting to be 13 seconds behind poor chair. Nowhere near the race win, but it is what it is. You have to just have the race that's ahead of you and, you know, getting half spun at the start wasn't ideal. Meanwhile, there's some great scrapping going on uh, behind in the bottom half of the top 10. It's uh, Norris getting ahead of Fittipaldi. Schumacher on the back of uh, the Brazilian now. So it looks like Fittipaldi's maybe struggling for some tyre wear. And he's actually lost uh, well, one position there. He might lose another to the Ferrari. Is that maybe a sign of things to come for Felipe Drogovic, I wonder? Is the Haas not too great on its tyres? We're going to find out because we're here now on the last lap of the Grand Prix. Dragovic still leads, but the gap is under one second now to Teo Porcher. Myself in third, Sonoda, Gasly, Norris, Schumacher, Fittipaldi in P8. Look how close they all are. That is incredible. P4 down to, what is that? P9. Like all on the same bit of tarmac on the same straight. That is incredible. But we cut back to the live action at the front, and we're on board with Teo Porcher in P2. He's now now, half a second behind Drogovic. I think those tyres are starting to go off for Felipe Drogovic, but he, he's done enough. He, he you know, you know, Porsche has not got close to him, and now that this is the last DRS place uh, place to make a pass. I think Drogovic has done enough. Meanwhile, quite some way back, 19 seconds back now, as my softs are really going off the cliff to the point where Gasly now is creeping into within a second of us, but I don't think it's going to be a problem, but it'll be Gasly in P4, Sonoda with a solid P5, but Aston Martin will still be ruining that they're not making the most of their best car on paper, because instead it's Felipe Drogovic who's going to break Porche's streak. The Brazilian has just won his first ever Formula One Grand Prix and it's a first ever win for Haas. Unreal stuff. Take a bow, Felipe Drogovic. Incredible, incredible stuff. Poor chair second, ourselves in third. It's a solid day in the office for the team, 2-3, but... Again, poor chair. Okay, look, he didn't win the race, but he got second place. He's not been off the two top steps of the podium uh, three races into this uh, season. He's just, he's, right now, he's doing everything he needs to do. He's very, very consistent. It's going to be tough. Great, great work from the Haas team. They take a famous win here today. Tell me, Ant, how do they manage to achieve this win? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs and that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. Today was another great race and an even greater victory for Haas. Here they come now to step out onto the top of the podium. They'll be incredibly happy with today's results. What a man, Felipe Dr There is something about Felipe Drogovic in a Haas as well 
on this channel that he, he just he just does bits. This happened in F1 22 career mode, and now F1 23, completely different game. Drogovic took a very different path into F1 and you know promoted at a very different time in the in the series compared to F1 22. But here he is again, turning up with Haas. There's definitely something in the goading about ha one Haas making great upgrades late on into a career save, and then Drogovic if he gets into that said car doing very very well. And like I said, Aston Martin. Martin. They're the best team on paper. They're going to be ruining the fact that they're not the ones breaking poor chair's streak of the two wins in a row. Um, Sonoda P5, Leclerc only just recovers to P10. They're not making the most of their car right now. And it means poor chair leads the way. And there's a, uh, there's a really massive gap of 35 points. Without poor chair in the picture though, this would be a banging title fight at the or, or standings right now. Uh, a bit too early to say title fight. Standings would be ridiculously close. Myself in second. Sonoda third. Leclerc fourth. Drogovic now up into P5. Gasly P6. Uh, but poor chair of course is there. And it means that we are actually already breaking the 100 point mark as a team. Aston Martin in second place. Look at Red Bull though. To say obviously we commented on Red Bull, Ferrari, McLaren and Mercedes all um, you know dipping down in the R&D charts. Red Bull have actually done very well to recover and bounce back immediately to be P3 in the standings ahead of Haas, ahead of Audi and Mercedes to say how quick they looked they'll be really annoyed that they're still last in the championship. That's a bit crazy to be honest because they've actually looked really quick in this race. So I feel like at some point Mercedes will start to climb the tables but what an Abu Dhabi Grand Prix that was. Once again, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix earlier in the season delivers the goods. Guys, if you have enjoyed that, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.